So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create continuous integration workflow that runs your test using Node.js and GitHub Actions. Now, if you allow me to set expectations, my assumption is you already have the understanding of Node.js and at least a vague idea of YAML. If you don't, you can fill in the blanks with the language of your choice and leverage the GitHub community forum for the rest. So I have this project that I leverage a lot in my action workflows to tell me what the week number is. In the current standard calendar, we have 52 weeks in the year. Uh, and this workflow is actually leveraged to set up a GitHub issue uh, for my team to share what they're working on. Uh, essentially a weekly standup, but to a GitHub issue. And since I took the time to write tests for my code, I want to add a CI workflow to ensure that the tests pass when changes are made. Now, normally I would just go directly to the actions tab in my repo and, and click add new workflow. But instead of making this really easy, I'm going to actually add a, a workflow file manually. Now I'll start by adding a new file to the repo. Um, fun fact, a new workflow file is what's going to trigger our first test run. Um, but more on that later. So I'm going to create a new workflow called Node.js. So this is where the YAML is going to come into play. So just keep in mind, spaces really matter, not tabs. The other thing is the workflow files need to live in the workflows folder. The workflows folder needs to be in the .github folder. If you've never used the .github folder, it's a magical place where a lot of really clever things happen. So again, check out the GitHub documentation for more details on that and what you can do with there. For the sake of brevity, I'm gonna copy and paste the next parts of these sections while explaining them away. All right, to start first, I'm gonna set up a name for my workflow. This will make things easier in finding it in the actions logs. Uh, the name can actually be whatever you want uh, to identify it as. Uh, this will also go similar to the name of your jobs and your steps, which we'll get to it shortly. I'm also going to set this up to run on every push to my branch. So that's what this line here is showing. I can specify different branches using filters, but for now, I'm going to do a basic workflow and just call this on every push. So the next section is going to be jobs. Each actual workflow can run up to 22 jobs, actually. I just checked. Each workflow can actually run 20 jobs as per the documentation at docs.github.com. As mentioned before, I can name whatever I want, but I'm gonna name my job build. Um, this is also gonna be the job ID. This is important if you wanna run multiple workflows that have multiple jobs and you wanna run concurrent jobs to wait on certain other jobs based on that ID. That sounds like a lot and confusing, but this know that job ID is important if you wanna do some complicated stuff with your workflows. I will briefly point out that my hosted runner is Ubuntu. Uh, we have hosted runners for Mac OS and for Windows in addition to Linux. So keep that in mind if you have special services you wanna include in your environments, uh, that's where that comes into play. I have set up a strategy for matrix builds by specifying two different nodes ver node versions. And I want those to run simultaneously. So you'll see that later. I'll show you that and point that out. Uh, I also mentioned before, you can have up to 20 concurrent jobs within one workflow. But also within each job, you can have multiple steps too as well, which I'll show now. So I've got a couple concurrent steps here uh, using different actions. Now I wanna take a time out and explain the difference between a workflow and action because I've used those interchangeably. Uh, a workflow is a combination of different actions. So my first action I have here is actually checking out my default branch of the repo. This would ensure that the environment that I'm testing on is similar to what is gonna be on my default branch in production. In other words, this workflow run will emulate the state of your default branch with the changes that you're pushing. I have mentioned this a few times, but my repo is written in Node.js, and which is why I have the setup node action in my next step. This is where the matrix builds will then grab the node version. So if you focus your, your attention to line 12, I've got two different node versions represented, node 10 and node 12. I'm gonna be running those each of those versions in separate jobs concurrently. And I'll show you that in a moment. So the final piece of this puzzle is let's go ahead and commit this directly to the main branch so I can see my action run. Now that this is now pushed live on the branch, I can see my action is run in the actions tab. And you can also see that node 10 and node 12 have both run as separate jobs. Nice. So I hope this gives you a good overview of how to get actions set up manually. I look forward to seeing your ideas in production.